Hi everyone, it's Peter's Arms, Greeny Flicks Adventure 8. I'm out today with one camera, one lens. It's the Leica M10R, and I've also got what is my favorite lens right now, which is the 35mm F2 Summicron Apple version. Now, what's prompted this video is Leica has another wonderful camera, which is a Q2, comes in the Q2 monochrome as well. Previous version, I think, was Q. Now the concept of that was that there's one lens, which is a 28mm lens, which then can be, you can automatically take photographs at 35 and 50, but effectively it's cropping down the sensor to make it a smaller frame, and that's how you get your 35 and 50 focal length. So can that be replicated? Instead of a 28mm lens, is 35mm lens better? And uh, so that's what this video is about, using just one lens, one camera body. The Leica M10R has 40 megapixels, so it's, it's equivalent. If I want to go wider than 35, well, then you can take two shots and stitch them together in Lightroom. So that's a concept. One of the reasons why I like the uh, Summicron Apple so much is one of the unique aspects of this lens is you can actually go closer focus than 0.7. That's 0.7 is the normal minimum focal distance of most like lenses. With this one you can just go right past that and go right down to 0.3 meters. Incredible. Which means I can take a photo here. Now the best way to do that is to use live view and that way you can uh, get your focus right using focus peaking here and I can take the shot on with the walk and on with the shoot Shooting panorama shots, taking multiple shots is all very nice as long as you've got a subject that's not moving. So even on the beach here, you've got the waves coming in, which means you're going to have to take a shot and then quickly take a shot, sort of, so that 
we don't have too much movement between the shots. The other thing is, um, if you shoot wide open, say f2, even though this is a spectacular lens, there's still a bit of vignetting in the corners. Lightroom does sort of compensate and make some adjustments automatically, but it's easier if it's a nice flat profile exposure across the whole frame to make the stitching a bit easier. Shooting into the sun here is not exactly the ideal situation, but we'll take a couple of shots just um, for the sake of the example. Uh, let's see, what shall I do? Let's shoot F8, which will give you a huge depth of field. And we'll take uh, one shot, two shots. Okay, two shots, that's it. And there were some waves breaking there, so they should be pretty close together. And uh, we'll try that again. And the wave just broke, so we'll be able to see what the difference is and whether you actually notice it in Lightroom or not. Let's jump into Lightroom and have a look at some of these photographs, uh, particularly around the cropping. So you can see how 35 goes to 50, goes to 90. And I even did some tests later on using a 21 millimeter lens and see what happens when you crop that to 35, 50 and 90 as well. Let's get into the Lightroom and have a look. Let's have a closer look at these panoramas again. You can see that there's some darker areas here. So we've got two photographs that have been stitched together. And here you've got four photographs. You can actually just see the, the dark areas here. One way to get over that is to uh, have more shots and that will even it out. This shot here is actually four shots joined together. In this shot, I've taken four photographs with the 35 millimeter Summicron lens. And you can see how Lightroom has stitch these four shots together. It doesn't matter what sequence you actually take the shots in, Lightroom can sort of work out which one goes where. So one, two, three, four. The crop that I've done here is equivalent to a 21 millimeter lens, which then leads me to the next point. How can we actually use that 35 millimeter lens and crop it down to the different focal lengths? 55, 90. What I'll also do is use a 21 millimeter lens and then crop that one down to 35, 50 and 90. So we have a comparison. All right, so we're starting off with a 35 millimeter original uh, on the M10R, so it's 40 megapixel. Then you can see the 50 mil crop and also the 90 millimeter crop. Okay, let's have a look at the 21 millimeter. Now here I'm going to uh, provide also some megapixels. So we've got 28 millimeter crop here, followed by a 35 millimeter crop, followed by a 50 millimeter crop, and I'll throw in another one here, a 75 millimeter crop, and then also a 90 millimeter crop. Now at the same time, you'd see all these different megapixel readings in purple, in red, and also in yellow. Okay, so the purple megapixel readings here is so if we were using in this case here i was for these photographs i was using the m240p so it's 24 megapixel frame if i started with the 21 millimeter lens at 24 megapixel as you start to crop that image down you start losing megapixels so 28 millimeter crop would be 14 35 millimeter crop would be around 9 megapixel a 50 millimeter crop would be around 3.4 megapixel a 75 about 1.8 and a 90 millimeter crop you're down to about 1.2 megapixel needless to say when you blow these up then you start to see some of the detail disappearing as well if you start with a 35 millimeter lens and on the m10r for example which is a 40 megapixel camera then when you crop it down to 50 you're at 18 which is still very reasonable if you crop it down to 75 you're at 8 so it's not bad and if you crop it down to 90 millimeter, then you're down to about 
As a comparison, the Leica Q2, which I don't have, but that comes with a standard 28 millimeter lens at 47 megapixels. The way it operates is that to get the other focal lengths, you basically crop down the frame. To get 35 millimeters, it would be down to 30 megapixel, down to 15 millimeters would be down to 15 megapixel, and at 75 millimeter crop, it would be at seven megapixel. So I guess that's, those numbers are not too far from starting off with a 35 millimeter frame at 40 megapixel with the M10R. On the left here, we've got the 21 millimeter photograph that's been cropped down to 90 millimeters. From its original crop, it went down from 24 megapixel at 21 millimeter. And when you crop it down to 90, it goes down to 1.2 megapixel. But what I've done is I've taken that DNG file and exported it and then increased the resolution to equivalent to 24 megapixel. 6,000 pixels by 4,000 basically. Then as a comparison, I've got on the right side here, I've taken the same photograph with the 90 millimeter Summicron F2 Apple. Let's zoom in and we're at 200% and you can see there's a, there's a big difference. Once you start to crop in quite significantly, you do lose some detail. And, but at least you get the photograph. So you see the no smoking on the right here. You don't see that at all in the severely cropped photograph. And um, if we look into the background here. Uh, once it's been cropped heavily, you start to see all the pixels, even though once you export it and make it larger again, well, you obviously you make all the pixels larger as well, so they still become very clear in the photograph if you are planning to enlarge that. Okay, well, we've got to conclude this video somehow. So, one camera body, one lens. The... The Leica Q2, I think, is a great concept. I don't have one, so the best I can do right now is using one of my Leica M cameras and choosing one lens, one body, and then seeing what sort of versatility I can have with that combination. So the conclusion. On the M240, so that's the same as the M10, for example, as far as megapixels are concerned, I've got the 21mm lens. So that combination provides wide angle and i reckon so i reckon you can crop this down to 28 down to 35 and probably the maximum that i'd crop this down to this combination would be to 50 millimeters which is you know like a a short uh, portrait lens and uh, when you crop down to 50 millimeters you're down to about four megapixels so it still produces a really good image and quite a bit of detail so that's that combination 24 megapixel sensor, 21 millimeter lens, crop down to 50, I think quite easily and get a good, get a good result. If I'm able to start off with more megapixels, so the M10R, for example, has 40 megapixel, then the 35 millimeter lens as a standard lens on the M10R, I think is a great result. This one, you can crop down even further. You can go to uh, 50, you can go to 75, you can go to 90. At 90, you're still getting a 6 megapixel file out of the 40 megapixel sensor once you've cropped it down to that amount. Still getting a good image, so that's a that offers huge versatility, I think, from 35 right up to 90. 90 is great for landscape, bringing in the, the distance closer. And then uh, if you need to go wider, as the example I had earlier, at 21 millimeter, taking either panorama or taking a sequence of four shots and then stitching those together in Lightroom so you can get that white, really wide angle situation if you want to. There are disadvantages in that. Obviously, you want your subject not to be moving, otherwise, you can't stitch the photographs together. The Leica Q2 that comes in that starts at 47 megapixel at 28 millimeter focal length. And then you can crop down to 35, down to 50, and down to 75. And at 75, you're getting a 7 megapixel photo. <laughs> Do you like the concept of having just one body, one lens, and then trying to make it as versatile as possible? 
I think it's great because then you travel light and it doesn't matter what sort of situation you're in, you can still get the shot, whether it be really wide or whether it's zoom in. All you have to decide is which lens is your standard lens on your body depending on how many megapixels you have. I think my favorite lens is still the 35 millimeter focal length. And then I'm always sort of tossing up whether I go for the Summicron F2 or the Summilux F1.4. It's a nice problem to have, isn't it? What's your favorite combination as far as body and a single lens? Do you have one? Is that something you do? I welcome your comments. Do comment and um, if it's the first time to my channel and you haven't already subscribed, then uh, please do subscribe. That helps. If you like the content, if you thought this was a useful video for you, then please give it a thumbs up. That helps to support the channel. I really appreciate you coming back to my channel and thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.